Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. If you are new here, my name is Marin. We like to upload wacky modern gameplay every Monday and Friday and today we are playing some Wish Scred. So yes, I know the card Wish would probably be better in Boros, but we're gonna try it in Scred today for fun in Mono Red just to see if it's potentially better than Karn the Great Creator. So let's get to it. Hope you enjoy. All right, welcome to the Scred Wish deck tech. As always, the deck list link is down below in the description if you want to follow along with it as we go through the list. So Wish is a three mana sorcery that can allow you to play a card from your sideboard this turn. So I'm not going to go over each sideboard card because there's 15 singletons. It would take too long. So I'd recommend just checking the deck list link down below or you'll see it during the gameplay as well. But we just have a bunch of scattering of different things that'll help us for the situation. Now, if you are new to modern, Scred is called Scred because it plays this card called Scred, which is just a removal spell that does damage based on the number of snow permanents you have. So it's just a mono red control deck that runs a bunch of snow basics. That's all it really is. So along with all of the removal and control burn effects, we got a bunch of planeswalkers like Chandra Torch of Defiance and some other stuff. We're even trying a Karn the Great Creator as well, just a singleton to pair alongside the Wish so we can continue to grab even more things from the sideboard. So it's like mono red sideboard control. And of course, it could not be mono red control without Blood Moon. And there's even a Magus of the Moon in the sideboard so we can wish for it if we really need that Blood Moon effect. So that is the main idea of the deck. The rest of it's kind of self-explanatory, but like I said, deck Let's link down below if you want to see the rest of it. And with that, let's get on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. And before we get into it, just a few quick plugs. Thank you so much to our patrons for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And we now do commander streams with our patrons every Tuesday. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Ronin the Box and we won the die roll. Going to be on the play here with some Scred Wish and uh, I mean on the play, Land 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 Blood Moon, they could do something. But seeing as how they have a Goblin Avatar, maybe I shouldn't have kept it now that I think about it. Because people who have goblin avatars always play goblins. Like, you don't have a goblin avatar and not play goblins. That's not how it works. Once a goblin loyalist, always a goblin loyalist. Stomping grounds. Hey, would you look at that? It's a goblin. And I don't have any burn. And now with that mana dork, they don't care too much about Blood Moon. I'm surprised they fetched a stomping ground after seeing Snow Covered Mountain go. Yep, it's goblins. But I do have three copies of Anger. And I do have a Pyroclasm I can grab with Wish. So we're going to die in two turns. And I'm only going to have four mana, so I'll have to wish for a Flame Slash. All right, Scred's good. But let's just get out Blood Moon here. I'll have to Scred the, the Snoop. Yep, Snoop time. Matron. So um, I do have many ways to beat this combo. I can just like go for a curse totem. I have curse totem in my board, right? Yo, Drew, did the? I think the notification finally worked. I I heard it. I heard it. Did it work? But thank you so 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 much, Drew, for that dono. I really really appreciate you. I hope you're having a nice day. It's great to see you again. What you been up to? How's life? How's life? How's the kids? How's the wife? I'm pretty sure I took, um, I'm pretty sure that I took a cursed totem out of my board because of the amount of removal and burn I got. But I can grab Torpor Orb, which does stop their combo and it stops a lot of their stuff. So I'll grab a Torpor Orb. Another matron.
You're grabbing another Snoop. Pyroclasm's not bad too, but we really need to just deal with the Snoop. Wish for... Yeah, it's gotta be Torp Orb. And then next turn, I'll, I'll wish for Pyroclasm. That's super, super generous, Drew. Can't thank you enough. I'm always just blown away every single time you do that. And Shroom as well. And uh, Zev Noble when he used to chill here. You guys are wild. I'm so thankful to have people like you in my chat. All right, um, yeah, let's just pyroclasm. Now, I would like to draw any of my finishers, please. Any of my my eight planes or my nine planeswalkers would be great. And also, two I have two worm coils I'd like to get. Wouldn't even mind Mindstone as a cantrip. More wishes would be good. Like, it's a lot of good things here. Torborb is going to do some heavy work this game. Like half their creatures have ETB effects. Sling Gang Lieutenant, Munitions, Siege Gang Commander, um, Bogart Harbinger, Goblin Matron, Goblin Ringleader, everything. So it's just going to stop so much. All right. Well, Blood Moon Tron assembled. So did anybody else see that dono notification pop up on screen when it happened? Because I think it, I think I fixed it. I went into Streamlabs and I tried to fix it. And I didn't switch I didn't change a single thing because like every time I go into Streamlabs and to check if the donation notifications are working, it always says it's working. And then I do a little test button and it says it's working and it like it comes up on the screen and everything looks fine but for some reason when somebody actually donates in real time it never comes up i don't get it i think i gotta go to stream elements for that or something because i'm using a stream elements link and i don't know where in stream labs to put that i looked all over i couldn't remember where i did it originally i thought benji was here for a second i saw the benji emote and i was like wait is benji here all right, Bolt. Looks like they got a Sling Lieutenant, probably. So are they doing Siege Gang Commander stuff? Nope, they're keeping it on four. All right, well, I will Bolt the Harbinger here. There we go, there's something to do. All right, give me some goodies, deck. Give me some goodies. Exile. Wow, Blood Moon number four. <laughs> I hit all four Blood Moons in the top 16 cards of my deck. You're like Benji, but less good at speedruns and more in hospital. Ain't we all? <laughs> oh my goodness, give me something to do. Please. Anger, I'll take it. I possibly should have saved that mountain in my hand just in case I would want to get a Valakut Exploration with Chandra, which I'd probably want to get a Ensnaring Bridge because their last way to kill us is now just attacking because we're shutting down their combo with Torpor Orb. They can get their combo naturally, though. They just scoop it up, though. Yeah, they're not going to beat the Chandra value with the Torp Orb on the table. Whoa, okay, we're gonna get a Scred, a Bolt, Anger. Yeah, we were just gonna remove everything for a while and there was the Wish. So it was gonna be in two turns we were gonna get the Wish because Chandra's gonna be exiling the top card. 
And then Chandra's going to ult too, also in the next turn. So that's, that's pretty good. Pretty good for us. Got to run it right back because this deck does not sideboard. So note to self, grab Torpor Orb. So the the donation notification didn't pop up on the screen, but the sound effect did. I'm pretty sure. I heard the sound effect at least. All right, I will definitely keep Bolt Anger, so keep it. Oh, Mindstone into Karn. I like. I think Karn will grab a Torp Orb or a Bridge. You know, despite Bridge being pretty safe, I think Torp Orb is honestly kind of safer here because they have access to a combo that requires ETB effects. Putrid Goblin. Well, that tells us that they got Grumgooly going on. So... I guess uh, we're going to shut down its um, its potential 1-1 one -one counter, I guess. Feels bad, but I'm gonna do it. Ooh, I like Chandra. Because we can't have the Putrid Goblin sackable to the, the Krark, the, the Skirk Prospector, because then it'll go infinite with Grumgooly. We're not going to allow that. So they probably have Collected Company in their deck. Goblin Crater. Oh, they're going to blow up my Mind Stone. All right, let's just go Chandra and take it up. Maybe we can cause a little distraction with Chandra here. Take up Chandra. Koth. I would love to have played Koth, but cannot. They're already down to 14. They fed shock twice. Wait, why are they at 14 if they fed shock twice? Oh, no, they didn't, they didn't shock on the first turn. All right, they hit Chandra down to two. Take up Chandra for mana. Anger. Come on, let that go. They're killing my Mind Stone. Oh, imagine if I played Karn first. All right, well, play a land, play a Karn. Grab a Torp Orb. Torpor Orb. So good. It's so good. <laughs> Snoop is here, but it can't combo. All right, Torpor Orb. Minus Karn, grab a bridge, and this is probably where they scoop. Unless they have Shattering Spree. Take up Chandra. So, um, so the, uh, the Snoop can actually still swing and kill Karn here but only once. It only has one opportunity to attack. You saw a little blue dot pop up when the, the dono went through? I mean, we could we could check and see if anybody wants to donate like one penny. Bogart Harbinger comes out, but it just dies. All right, take up Chandra. Wait, actually, let me play a land first and then take up Chandra because I might hit a six drop. Did not hit a six drop. All right, well, let's bolt a snoop. And let's actually play another Chandra. Keep the new one and take up again. 
so we can increase the clock, hit them for another two. The combination of bridge and torpor is just stupidly good here. Mindstone. All right, take up Chandra and it is a blood moon. I will accept that. That seems good to me. Oh, we're prisoning them out so hard here. All right, I'll, I'll stop on the end step and I'll crack my mindstone. All right, yield until the next end step. Oh, 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 I see it. It popped up right here. You see that right there? It popped up, but no words came up on the screen. Oh, Drew, you didn't have to, Drew. You didn't have to. Thank you so much, Shroom, for the 10 and Drew for the 50. Oh my goodness. You guys are like really, really, really helping out. You guys make up like 80% of, of my Twitch income. Like, I, I am succeeding on twitch because of you guys like just because of you guys oh we drew a wish all right so with wish we can go and get um what are we gonna get with wish probably valica oh let's get this thing chandra acolyte of flame or whatever and let's put loyalty on our walkers play a land take up chandra next turn we can ult our chandra Oh, we drew a bolt. Bolt your face. And now one single spell that we taught that can kill them with the Chandra emblem. This is perfect. This is the hardest I ever smacked a deck around before. <laughs> he said in the chat, only a coward wouldn't go for four blood moons. I mean, I did have that opportunity. Didn't go for it, though. Goblin Trash Master. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's a good one. Any spell and I win. Yep, that's a spell. All right, Ult Chandra. And Scred your Trash Master. Hit you for five. GG. That was amazing. Wish is so good. GG. They gave us the GGs in the chat. Good opponent. I like this opponent. And now that we're about halfway through the video, if you felt it has earned a like, a comment, or a share, I really appreciate it. It helps grow the channel. All right, thank you. Got a game here against Big Zato6. We won the die roll. Going to be in the play here with some Scred Wish, and that is going to be a keep. Hoping that our removal does something. If it doesn't, then this hand's pretty dead. It's going to be pretty obvious what we're playing once we go Snow Covered Mountain to Relic. All right, what if Foothills? It looks like it's going to be a good matchup for Blood Moon, maybe. Depending. Okay, never mind, it's not. They have Blood Moons of their own. Is it Enchantress or Ponza? It is Ponza. All right, so. I thought it was going to be one of those lands decks, like Valakut decks. So it would have been good. It was close to being good, but not quite. I'll crack Relic at the end step here. There's no reason to hate the graveyard here. Bushfire Elemental. So it's aggro. Oh, it's Landfall. Okay, okay. Scred. Oh no, they're gonna fetch in response. No, no, I forgot they're gonna fetch in response. I drew a worm coil. I need a land drop though. We are 25 land decks, so it's a good chance we get a land. It's like 50 per almost a 50% chance. Gotta get up to this anger. And snakes can veil to six six. Another relic, please give me my land. Oh my goodness! How the heck are they playing a blood moon deck of their own while they're playing fetches and landfall? Okay, maybe they're not. Maybe they. 
They're just like a Ren, Ren and Six, just land value deck. Vines of Vastwood, what are they doing to this guy? What are they doing? There we go, anger. So for the sideboard here, we're probably going to want um, like ensnaring bridge. It's probably what we want to get with wish. Really wish I got my land drop there. Chandra could ramp us right up into worm coil, and once we get that out, we just win. Land? Dude, where's my lands? We're 25 land deck. All right, pass and leave up scred. Actually, you know what? I don't... I, I think I'm just going to anger, actually, because I don't want them to have five mana here with Arbor Elf, like, ramping them for two. So let's just anger. Mindstone, well, it's technically a land. Here you go. All right, we shut that down. Blood Moon's just basically gonna shut down a lot of landfall stuff. I knew they were gonna have a questing beast. I just knew it. All right, well, Chandra can snipe that. Too bad I only have three snow-covered permanents. Chandra minus, if they have another questing beast, we die. I have a feeling they do because they got five cards in hand. And they were playing nothing for a while. So there's a really high chance they do. Oh, Garrick Wildspeaker, that's fine. I'll be able to get out Worm Coil now and just win. Like the second Worm Coil hits, they're probably just scooping. All right, make some mana with Chandra. Worm Coil. Scoop time. I can even wish to. Steel Leaf Champion. Give me a land, please. They're attacking. They actually want to trade with this, all right? So they did have a bolt all along. Oh, wait, they have a Gore Clan Rampager, right? It's a Gore Clan? Or is it a command? Is it like um, Clan Defiance? Not Clan Defiance, you get it. All right, so yeah, they realize it's over because the Worm Coil. Got a little mana screwed there, choked up a bit, but all it took was that. Sweet. Sideboard time. Don't um since our sideboard is part of our plans, we just submit it right back every single time. We don't have to sideboard at all. And um I guess I'll shout at the sideboard here and there for YouTube. So if nobody if somebody wanted to know the sideboard and didn't check the decklist link, we got flame slash, shattering speed, pyroclasm, okay, too bad, too late. You'll have to just pause the video or like zoom in. You can hold con on your keyboard, you can hold control and press plus and that'll allow you to zoom in. If you want to zoom back out, just hold control, press minus. Um, This hand is awkward, but I think I'm going to keep it because I'm on the draw. I can bolt their first thing and I can scrying sheets to try to like filter a bit or like get get a land out the way. And uh, I have a lot of potential decent draws. Utopia Sprawl, again. 
another cough. We got two of our cough, like our only two coughs in the deck we drew. That's unfortunate. All right, here we go again. All right, in response to that, Bolt. Do you have a Blossoming Defense? Do you have a Snakeskin Veil? Oh yeah, Control Mouse Wheel. I never use that though. I always just use Control Plus and Control Minus. They do have a Snakeskin Veil. It is a 6-6 six, six Hexproof again. Can I get a Mind Stone? A Scred? I'll take a Scred. Oh, I almost just wasted it there. All right, Scred. It's gone. Nice. We got another one. Just another Utopia Sprawl. Expecting us to have like Pillage or something. All right, Arbor Elf into... Nothing. All right, so there's a Wish. I don't need to use that yet. Let's just grind sheets and activate it at the end step. So let's go yield until next end step here. They have six potential mana here. This is very terrifying. They could have like a prime time. I wouldn't count it out. Like there's a reason why they got Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl in their landfall. So I would expect prime time. Especially since they also have Garrick Wildspeaker, that's a big indicator of prime time. Old Growth Troll. All right. Bolt. Um, does it reveal it or does it just look at it? It's just look at it. Okay. Well, I can throw out a Koth literally just as a way to deter them for a turn and just get them to swing at Koth. So let's play one of our redundant Koths. And let's take it up. And of course I ticked up on the Summoning Sick Mountain. That always happens. Why does it? Oh no, I should have bolted the Arbor Elf. Oh no. Oh no, they got Queen Bee. Oh no, what a luck sack. No, dude. Oh no. What am I going to do about this? It's Bull Arbor Elf. They're going to untap a land, obviously. I can't live for a turn. I cannot. If I didn't play Snow Covered Mountain, then maybe. Because then I could have played Koth, minus him, got five mana, tapped one. Yeah, I would have had enough if I didn't play Scrying Sheets and if I top deck a mountain here. I could have grabbed a Ensnaring Bridge. Whoa, they have an Aspect of Hydra. Yeah, we're dead. So they're playing probably Targnall or whatever that, that Gruul Legend guy is from the new set. I imagine that's what they're playing. So in this matchup, Oh, you know, we could wish for Flame Slash in that kind of situation. It's not bad. All right. But yeah, Bridge. Bridge is our best friend here. Booty. Whoa. I'm going to keep that. Because at the least I can go wish for a flame slash, kill, kill another thing, and then maybe I get up to six and I wish for a bridge. I'm really hoping they start an Arbor Elf so I have something to kill here. Nope, they just had Utopia Sprawl every time. Watch them have the brush fire into a fetch again, third time in a row, every single game. Okay, they didn't. Cool. It's going to be um, 
something I can't kill, isn't it? But they got Utopia Sprawl in red, so they can't old growth troll here. It is Valkyrie Exploration. Oh, they have Molten Rain. That's so random in your deck. Why is that there? It's like your deck isn't Ponza at all, then suddenly it is. That makes no sense in your deck. Like your landfall aggro and you're playing Molten Rain, you gotta just keep up the aggression. That has to be like a sideboard card, but then why wouldn't you just run Pillage? Because Pillage is more versatile, it can hit an artifact, it can hit an ensnaring bridge, and Molten Rain can't. That's so awkward. Mama Morphos. Bushfire. Let me guess. Fetch. Yep. Okay. Well, as usual, in response, Bolt. See if they got a snakeskin veil. I'm not going to scred. I'm going to let it go again. <laughs> Yep, snakeskin veil it is. All right, I'll take this Mac and I'll just scred it next turn. They're they're wasting. They literally this okay. This opponent's very questionable, extremely questionable. Like you could have just saved that because you know I'm gonna scred it next turn. Like you know I'm gonna have another removal spell. Why did you do that? <laughs> now it's dead because you didn't hold up your other snakeskin veil that you could have been holding up right now. They're just so greedy for every bit of damage. You can't be greedy today. It's Monday. You can only be greedy on Thursday. Speaking of the seven deadly sins, um, I just realized that, you know, for many, many years, people were talking about, ugh, another Molten Rain? People were talking about making a, like, seven deadly sins commander decks and whatnot. And now that we have Asmodeus, the Arc Fiend, in Dungeons and Dragons set, that is the new general for that deck because Asmodeus is actually legitimately one of the seven deadly sins. So now you actually have a legit commander for that that uh that theme. So that's awesome. Because Asmodeus is the seventh sin, the sin of lust. And um so yeah, that's pretty cool. They have Treetop Village, which I can't kill. It's going to pressure my Chandra. But once I get this Chandra down, plus it up for mana, I'll be able to wish for a bridge. Ah, uh, but never mind, there's a Steel Leaf. But I will be able to kill that with Chandra, but then it'll die to a Treetop Village. Or you know what? I want to keep my Chandra around, so let's just wish for a Flame Slash. All right, Flame Slash on Steel Leaf. Gets him with Treetop. And they're gonna pump it, yep, I knew it, dude. They're using those things way too aggressively. You need to use them defensively. That's why they give Hexproof. That's that's what they're there for. All right. Chandra. Tick up for another Chandra. It's going to be a no. Next turn, I can wish for a bridge, and then we're safe for a while. Come on, opponent, make up your mind. You know you just want to activate a treetop village, pump it with another pump spell, and kill my Chandra. Or just kill me. I also need to gain some life, because I'm going to die to a bolt or a molten rain. Not a molten rain, I have all basics. But they have not revealed a single bolt in all three games so far. So I'm starting to think they don't even have bolt. Because they have all these pump spells, so they probably just don't have the room for bolt. 
which is a little interesting. I wouldn't run vines and snakeskin veil. I would just run bolt if I were you. All right, well, let's take up for some mana. And let's wish for a bridge. See, imagine, opponent, if you were running pillage instead of molten rain, you could kill a bridge. And Chandra's going to ult in a turn. So we're right there to get in that ult off and start killing our opponent. And uh, I think I'm going to want to wish for, like, probably Chandra, the, the little baby Chandra, because... I can take up this Chandra to seven quicker, or I can like ult it and still keep it next turn. That's the plan. So yeah, next turn I'll do that. And they scoop it up. They realize they have no answers to a bridge. That was sweet. Let me see, can I see my sideboard here? Yeah, so next turn I could have gotten baby Chandra Got this Chandra to eight, next turn ulted it, and now we have two Chandras on board with the Chandra emblem, so that was going to be sick. Could have also gotten Magus of the Moon, which wouldn't have been bad here. But I was thinking Dragon's Claw because my life total was dangerously low. But yeah, GG. Got a game here against Orpheus, and we're going to be on the draw here with some Scred Wish. It's going to be a Mulligan on the One Lander. That one is better. Seeing as how they have a really aggro looking avatar, I'm going to hope that these removal spells do something. So Blood Moon might not because they look very red, but I'm going to keep the Blood Moon still. I think I'm going to ditch, probably Wish. I don't have nearly enough mana for it right now. Okay, never mind. It's the complete opposite of what I thought their avatar revealed. So we're going up against Arcades. So Ensnaring Bridge actually does nothing against them because... They have like zero power, but they can still swing with their butts. So that's the problem. So how the heck do we stop this deck? I can double bolt Arcades. But if they get high alert, we can't do anything against high alert. So we're mono red, we don't have any enchantment hate. Okay, I can Blood Moon here. I shut down their mana. Maybe that can be what helps us win. That guy seems good. Nice blocker and scries when he enters. Seems like a good dude. They just straight up scoop it up. All right, so they're gonna have to be a little bit more prepared for Blood Moon in the next game. Fetch their basics. Yeah, I really have no way to beat an Arcades or high alert kind of effect in my sideboard, so it's going to be very scary when it happens. I'm just going to have to hope that I can get out my big stuff quicker and, and win before they can do that. And that they don't find high alert and that they find an Arcades, because I can at least deal with an Arcades. Man, I am hungry. What am I going to eat after this? Well, obviously frozen food, because it's all I got. Um, Orpheus. Is it a tiger? Was that a tiger with the Battle of the Horde? Tiger with horns? That's pretty cool. I don't get to see it from here, because the 20's covering it. But um, This hand's not going to do. It's a one lander. All right, we'll keep that one. Toss one of our wishes away. Maybe I should have tossed the anger, because their their booties are gonna be too fat for this stuff. They didn't fetch. Might as well exile all that. Basic forest, basic plains. Okay, they got their basics with Babish. Wall of Roots. Mindstone. And I'll crack my 
my Relic EOT here because I don't really need it in this matchup anyways. And I do need to hit my land drop. All right, Crack Relic. We got our land, that's good. And uh, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I think I'm just going to anger and then um, bolt their wall. Because, like, I'm not going to use these otherwise. I'm like genuinely surprised that I've never ever seen a modern Gauntlet of Power brew. Because Gauntlet of Power is a really strong card. I'm pretty sure it's modern legal. It's fifth dawn, right? Axbane Guardian, I can also deal with that. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Another Axe Bane Guardian. Well, let's just go ahead and scred that now. Worm Coil. All right, let's uh, go ahead and wish here. Probably for um, Figure of Destiny. All right, let's take him up. All right. Figure of Destiny needs two more turns to ult. I just need two more red sources. So turning this guy into an 8-8 flyer with first strike has got to be my only way to beat a wall of denial. It's going to be my only way. Hey, I got to land. All right. Worm coils definitely getting slammed. Oh, you know what? I should have went to combat first and swung and threatened to turn this thing into a 4-4 four because four, maybe they wouldn't have blocked. I mean, they probably would have blocked, but... You know, you never know, maybe they wouldn't. Axe Pain Guardian's gonna make a ton of mana now. Go to combat. Get in there with both. They are blocking. All right, and next turn I can turn it into an 8-8 flying first strike. You'll in the end step, I'll crack my Mind Stone. They have a ton of mana. What are they going to do with it? Oh, no. What is happening? What's about to happen? All I know is we're dead, but I just want to see what's going to kill us. Cause maybe in the next game I can I can figure out what to do to stop it. Are they just going to like Sphinx's revelation for their entire library? I mean, I I have no choice but to wait here and see what they're gonna do. I can't just scoop knowing we're dead because I have to make sure we're dead and figure out what it is that's killing us. Green. Okay, they're 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 getting some green. Arcades? Is it Wargate? Maybe it's Wargate. Overgrown Battlement. Making triple green, untapping, Wall of Bosoms. Yep. So it looks like they don't have the infinite out yet, but they're just playing some stuff. There's the high alert, but we're not dead yet. And, oh, they drew a path. Wait, why did the path worm coil? I'm literally about to get an 8-8 flying figure of destiny. They drew, they had two paths? That's their last cards? No way. You know what I should have done a long time ago? I should have cracked this Mind Stone to see if I drew a bolt for this Axe Baden Guardian. Okay, didn't. All right. Good to know. We're taking 11 here. 
and we are drawing a blood moon and we're dead all right so that happened um i am now aware but what can i do to stop that because like i said i took cursed totem out of the sideboard i had it in here and i think it was the very last thing i cut because i was thinking to myself that we have enough creature removal we have a lot of burn sweepers we don't really need ways to shut down creatures with abilities because we're just going to kill the creatures instead that was my thought process but i've learned today like through multiple matchups that i think it'd be pretty good to have it mm. let's keep that i gotta hit two lands in a row i can only afford to whiff once but being a 25 land deck i'm confident that we'll hit our lands but just knowing that i can Kill a couple Axebane Guardians with this hand is good. I whipped once. I cannot afford to whiff again. They are fetching their basics. Before I got the chance to get out of Blood Moon. There is the wall. Okay, well, let's scred it. Let's bolt it. Let's bop it, twist it, pull it. Land? Dude, I still didn't hit my land. No. 25 land deck, by the way. Just so you know. They got all of their colors. And still didn't get my land. Don't let this be the way this match ends. Come on. Don't let it end like this. Don't let it end with mana screw. I wanted it to be a good round. I really did. I really did want it to be a good round. But yeah, it's like we're we're not gonna deal with that anymore. We have no enchantment hate. Just had to die to mana screw, didn't it? As sucky as a ducky. But GG. Got a game here against Error23 UK. We're going to be on the play here with some Scred Wish. And that's two Screds and an Anger. They have Lurus as a companion, so does that tell me that I want to keep this? Because like they could have a bunch of cheap stuff and cheap creatures. I think I'm going to risk it. Lurus deck could mean many different things, but one of the things it could mean is cheap aggro. And since they have a Bitter Blossom avatar, I'm thinking that they're on fairies, so I'm just going to risk it. Thinking that they're going to play like a fairy seer and do a spell setter sprite and all that good stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's ruin crab. All right, I can't kill that next turn because it's, it doesn't have two toughness. So we're going to be against uh, Tasha's hideous laughter, most likely. Um, I'm actually just going to double scred this now. Because Anger can deal with whatever next thing they play. And they don't play too many creatures. Glimpse. Koth is cool. But they play a lot of counter spells, right? Is it like Sanity Grinding still? Probably not. Because they got the, the Dark Slick Shores, which reveals otherwise. Visions of Beyond is a cantrip. Nothing. All right, I'm slamming Koth. They're going to counterspell it. Nope. All right, which one's newly controlled? That's newly controlled. So let's take up Koth on this one. Go to combat, get in there for four. Are they going to push? Drown in the lock? I wouldn't mind either. That's fine. The cool thing is that Koth ults really quick. Just needs to tick up one more time and he's ready to ult. <laughs> All right, Field Ruin and they are passing. Oh, Blood Moon's not bad. All right, Mountain, Mindstone, Blood Moon. 
Oh, it resolved. All right, which that one's newly controlled. So let's take up on this one again. They didn't even crack their, okay, they can't even crack their field of ruin. I have no, no targets for it. And they're drowning and locking it again. That is fine. So as long as they're not killing my Karn or my Koth, Koth is going to ult next turn. And Koth is great. I might want to actually keep Koth around one more turn and just keep him alive because he's useful for ramp shenanigans right now. They're grabbing Luris, but they cannot even cast Luris. All right, you know what? We're doing it. We're doing it. Crack Koth. Now we have the emblem. We can start pinging our opponent for four every single turn. So let's do it. Let's go yield until the next end step. Visions of Beyond. All right. Ping you. Ping you. I'm going to be saying ping you quite a bit here. And ping you down to 15. So now mountains are actually good draws. Hey, what do you know? A mountain. All right. So they're on a three turn clock. They have to like draw a basic island and double hideous us, uh, Tasha's hideous laughter and just hit everything. But I don't think that they would like mill much because I do have a bunch of like four drop walkers. I have like worm coils and big six drops and like they're not going to be hitting much. All right, you got one more turn to kill us, opponent. Because I'm just going to EOT 5 you, untap 5 you. So you have one this this one turn. I'm going to let you keep your crab. You, you can have that crab. I'll give it to you. Oh, wait. Now I can actually kill the crab because I drew a sixth land. So still, I'm going to end a turn for you, untap and six you. So let's do that. Hideous. Nope, what hard cast uh, archive trap? Yep, that's fine. They're just doing it to get some information. My main deck, Relic of Prague, is going to be pretty good here. All right, for you. See if they got the surprise crypt incursion off a of Simeon Spirit Guide. Drew a seventh land, and they're scooping it up. Nice. On the sideboard against Hideous Mill. Um, I guess we just submit it right back because we're a wish deck and we don't need a sideboard. So what do we want? See, I really, really considered putting one uh, uh, Witch Bane Orb in the board. And right here, it would have actually been really good. But I didn't put it. So what do we want to grab against them? Probably nothing. There's not much. There's really not much. Maybe since the, the Tasha's mill deck is a thing, there should be like one Eldrazi Titan in the sideboard. I don't want to go to five, so maybe I should keep this one. Um, I really don't want to go to five. Let's keep this bottom and anger and we can like cycle a relic and being a 25 land deck on the draw, we should hit our lands. And it, if they play a crab and I draw a second mountain, I can scred it, at least. Dang it. Relic, go. Visions, Thought Scour, nope. Nothing. Land. 
Okay, there we go. Play another relic. Cycles that thing. All right, I'll exile it. They mill me for four. They hit a mine stone and four mountains. Yikes. I wanted those mountains. Oh my goodness. Now watch me draw no lands for the next three turns. Oh, that's huge that they hit those. I do have two cantrips right now at my disposal though. And I still have 20 lands in the deck to draw out of 48 cards. So it's like almost a half and half chance. It's like a coin flip at this point. Cracker relic. Okay, that works. Wish is pretty good, but I, like I said, there's nothing really good that we can grab. All right, let's yield until the next end step and let's check our sideboard. Um, probably the best thing would be like figure of destiny just for beatdowns, maybe Chandra. Hmm. I don't know, but let's uh let's grind sheets here. Nope. Um let's grind sheets again. Nope. All right, pass turn. They're getting all their basics, making sure they don't die to Blood Moon. Still nothing. All right, exile your flooded strand. Not like it matters, but still. We don't want 20 cards being in the graveyard for Visions of Beyond. All right, Mind Stone, go. What does that mean, 12? All right, let's get a mountain. And now they can archive trap us. Yep. I still don't have 20 yet, so I'm not turning on Visions of Beyond yet. If they try to mill us. Okay, in response to that, what is what are they exiling? Blood Moon? All right, let's crack Relic so that they can't exile Blood Moon. They're surgically again. So what I should have done is just tap Relic and try to exile my own Blood Moon first and then cracked it. So I kind of botched that, but I still do have a Magus of the Moon in the sideboard I can grab. So all I have to do here is just resolve this Chandra and we're good. Land. Nope, dissolve four wishes. Well, please resolve. All right, cool. Ping you for two. We exile a mountain though. We just exiled a mountain. I don't even want Megas of the Moon right now. Like, they have enough basics to not care. So, I think let's just, um, Karn. And, um, uh, minus see what we can get. And then we'll take up Chandra after that to see if we want to have the mana for anything. Um... There's nothing here that I want. There's nothing here that I want. Yeah, there's just nothing, dude. Do they do anything with the graveyard? Should I do Relic of Prague? Wait, Karn can grab stuff from the graveyard? Why is it allowing me to grab these things from exile? Oh, they're exiled. They're outside the game. I didn't know Karn did that. I'm grabbing that relic. 
I didn't know Karn did that. All right, let's take up for some mana. Play the relic. That's sick. I didn't know Karn did that. Exile their surgical. I have one floating mana. I could crack the relic, but I think I'm going to save it because I don't want them to like turn on drown in the lock or turn on visions or anything like that. I have never seen Karn grab from exile like that before. But now next turn, I'm going to I'm going to wish for baby Chandra. They're going to mill us for 14. We got seven cards left or nine cards left rather. All right, um, let's take up Chandra for mana. Let's wish for baby Chandra. Zero. Minus Karn. And with Karn, I'm gonna grab just like cheap artifacts. So let's say yes. And let's grab a Tor mod script. And um, let's actually play it. I was going to say not to, but I'm actually going to use it on myself. So Karn can minus and grab anything. But yeah, the plan is to win this turn, or to win next turn with uh, Chandra's Emblem. All right, EOT, let's exile their, their Fractured Sanity. All right, minus this Chandra. And then let's... Uh, let me see, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? I think we are just short. No, 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 we're good. We're good. So we can wish here. Because I wasted my Tormod script. So deal five to them. And then we can grab a uh, Pithing Needle. All right, that was the wrong one. I should have grabbed the other thing, the uh, Figure of Destiny, but that's still fine. And let's name Storm Crow. And then let's take up Karn on a relic. And then let's zero Chandra to make two hasters and hit them for three exactly. And of course, and of course, It's all because I was mana screwed and couldn't draw a mountain to save my life this whole game. It's like turn nine or something. Yeah, so I screwed up because with Karn I grabbed the, the Tormont script and I decided to play it last turn and hit my own graveyard because I didn't want anything to happen with my graveyard, like them to like get a full value visions of beyond or anything like that. But they are empty handed. So if they do not top deck a mill spell, because I have no scred targets, so they need to literally top deck a mill spell. I have to get to my main phase to win here. All right, they're in the tank. That, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That or they're freaking out. They're fetching. All right, they're doing nothing. All right, anger. Boom. Got him? All right, they say they say GG's. Let's give them the GG's. That was close. I punted the heck out of that game, man. I played it so bad, but I also got mana screwed like crazy, but it ended up paying off. 
Man, we we have nothing for, for Mill and the Cyborg. I was so close to putting a Witchbane Orb. I was so close. And Witchbane Orb would have been perfect. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. Or you can come out on a future Monday if you want to catch the gameplay live before it goes up on YouTube. And you can even play against me if you like. I welcome that as well. So we're speeding up three total rounds today. This first one, we are going up against Abzan Midrange. And Abzan's super underrated. And now they even have access to Vindicate too. It's awesome. Cause, But I think that they were lacking some needed threats. Like I didn't think that Scourge of the Skyclaves really fit well, fit well in their strategy. Seeing as how they weren't a Death Shadow variant. And um, I think that they should have more things like Lingering Souls and Liliana, but they were just more creature based. They're like a Luris deck. So, yeah. Um, but Blood Moon ends up shutting them down, and the opponent just does not ever concede. So it's just we have to play it out and keep on ticking and ticking and ticking our planeswalkers until we get there. Eventually, they give it and concede, and we're going on to the next game. And it's, it's sort of like the same deal. I do get a little bit scred flooded here, and then I get stuck with the million screds in hand with nothing to do with them at a certain point. But the problem with the strategy like of their kind of deck is that they they have so much removal that they might sometimes get removal flooded. So they can like draw like since their deck is probably like around 14 creatures and like 20 removal spells and you know, there's gonna be some times where they draw nothing but removal, and then there's gonna be some times where they draw some creatures that are mediocre on their own, but they need some support, like hand disruption or something. So they're, like their deck is very half and half, and they can draw one side or the other. It's not super balanced. I didn't, wasn't a really big fan of their Abzan build, but I do think Abzan is a very underrated color combination nowadays that not many people play, especially now with Stoneblade. Game number two in specific, we ended up losing this one because they drew that Sanctifier of Envec. And I was digging and digging and digging for a worm coil engine or something. Like I was, I needed a wish to get a bridge. I needed a, a car to grab a bridge. I needed a worm coil. I needed like cantrips at least. And I was like, anything I played there, I was going for the figure of destiny win because I had nothing to grab there um, with the... Um, Chandra or whatever. Or, oh wait, what what happened? I don't know what happened, but I was going for figure destiny. It died because of course they're holding a million removal cells. But this Sanctifier Envec alone hit me eight times to kill me. It's like I could not for the life of me get that worm coil. And the very last second when I do get the worm coil, they had three removal spells ready for me. And I was at one life. So I almost came back when I found that worm coil the last second. But of course, them being Abzan removal tribal, they had all the removal spells for it. So going on to game number three, this is where the opponent's deck um, does the thing that I just mentioned a second ago where they draw all removal, but they don't draw any threats. And then all I do is get Big Mama Chandra out, give them an emblem, and they're just bleeding out indefinitely. I don't even have to attack them because they're on a pretty quick clock now from this Chandra emblem, and they need to find a way to kill me quickly. And now the second Chandra getting there, ticking up and hitting them for two every time, um, they're just getting ever lower. And then I end up wishing for Valka Exploration because Valka Exploration can also ping at the end step as well. Uh, they keep on killing every single thing I play, but it doesn't matter because they're not killing me and they're getting drained out by that emblem. So I ended up getting there and taking down Amzan. And that was the longest game in the entire stream. So now we're going up on to the next game. And this was a very cool brew. The opponent was playing Ominous Seas. So it was just like counterspell draw tribal. They're just like countering all my spells and drawing cards until that this Ominous Seas gets to eight and then they make an eight, eight Kraken. And it's cool because there's a lot of counter spells that draw cards. Like there's Roman, there's Archmage's Charm, there's Cryptic Command, there is um, there's more. I can't think of it right now, but I I really like that idea. But that idea is extremely fragile because if you do not get Ominous Seas in your opener, then your deck sucks. Like your only other way that you could like put in there to like make sure you get an Ominous Seas is you can put like maybe two to four copies of muddle the mixture just as added consistency but even then if you were to muddle on turn three and tap out and then play the ominous season have not much to hold up on turn four you are dying to anything and so you just basically need ominous season your opener and pray that your, your opponent does not have an answer to it and then it's a cool deck but 
you know, otherwise it's extremely fragile. But they ended up countering every single thing we played and we could not get anything going. So unfortunately we still ended up dying because like I was getting mana screwed here. I just wanted to wait. I wanted to use all these wishes. I wanted to get out a Chandra. I tried to wish for a Python Needle to name Ominouses, but they just countered everything because I got mana screwed and couldn't get up to six for this big mama Chandra on time. And that 8-8 eight eight Kraken ends up beating us down and I don't find enough removal for it. They end up countering my bridge. They countered all three of the things I wished for. So they take us down but that was a really cool brew very fragile against literally anything else but they had the goods against us so we're going on to the last game and we're going up against fish now i didn't realize fish was so insane right now not only do they have counter spell now instead of deprive which is much more potent but they now have the new Sil Sil sylveon Sil Silvaloon, sylvan i don't know what it's called but the merfolk god and um that thing is crazy. It's crazier than I thought because like I didn't fully know what it did and then I just like read it post stream and it said when it attacks you draw a card and then like the the silver gill add up draws a card too. Spreading seas draws a card. It's just like like Mervo could stay aggressive while cantripping like crazy and having access to a hard counter spell and even a four drop that's pro red which by the way I can't deal with because it's pro red. And so they ha also have a million creatures that can beat down our planeswalkers. And uh, yeah, it was just not a good time because <laughs> they had like, by the time I dealt with everything, even sweeping them, killing all their creatures at this point, killing all their creatures, scredding their guys, they still had a full grip of seven. And I'm like, how, how do you still have seven cards in hand? I killed so many things. It's just that deck has got the card advantage piece. Now Sylveon is such an amazing piece for that deck. Like I almost want to try that deck out myself because it just seems so incredible right now. Just never runs out of things to do. <laughs> and that's something that um, Merfolk always struggled with. Eventually it'll fizzle out to enough removal spells, but now it just keeps on going and going. So they took us down and congrats. And with that, let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. All right, let's talk about some wish scred for modern. So I, I did say that in the intro that I know, yes, this would probably be better as Boros because you can get more, you know, reasonable sideboard cards to stop certain things. Like you could have rest in peace, deafening silence, Eidolon of rhetoric, rule of law, maybe instead of that. Um, there's like a lot of like really good hate pieces, even solemnity, even Phyrexian unlife, like and good life gain. There, there's more things you could add for this, have for the situation. And I, I uh, when I was brewing with Wish, I even tried it out in the good old Boros Ponza deck, the one that like wants to cleansing wildfire its own land that's indestructible and whatnot, so you can ramp and stuff, and then just play like Talisman of Conviction and just ramp up a bit and then do the Wish thing. I considered that. I did. I did. Um, however, I think that it was more fun to do it in Scred. That's why I did it in Scred. And the deck actually turned out pretty good. We had a pretty decent record and we we're having some pretty good success. And um, I would say that we we did do some cool Karn, Karn stuff at times. And if I had to choose which one is better, you know, that's actually pretty hard to choose because Wish can get um, non artifact cards. You can get anything from your sideboard with Wish. So it was like really good whenever we played it because it's just like, yes, I'm going to get that this thing that's amazing out of these 15 cards. I'm going to get the best one and just it'll really help me in the situation. And I was able to get like, I feel like I've gotten more um, red cards than I did artifacts. That's why Wish is a lot more versatile, kind of like Wish a lot more. It works very good alongside Chandra just ramping you with that mana. So... Yeah, I, I recommend giving this card a try. It's pretty good. There's got to be some other cool archetypes that this can go in. I even tried building it in like one, a typical Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl, like Gruel Midrange deck. And then even like Splashing White for like rest in peace and, and you know, good stuff like Rule of Law. Rule of Law. So they're, they're, it's a very, very versatile card. Um, and I would say that I did throw the sideboard together pretty quick in like 10 minutes however after playing that there are certain things that i probably would try to put in like cursed totem like i even said during the gameplay that i didn't put in cursed totem because um i have so much removal anyways that it's just like if i'm trying to shut down creatures abilities 
wouldn't it just be better to kill the creatures straight up? So that's why I didn't put it in, but there was actually a lot of situations where it would have been great. And, um, or specifically like two or three situations where it would have been great. And then also, um, I would say that Witch Bane Orb is something that you might want because we had no, even despite the fact that we beat Mill, we actually had no good cards to counter Mill. And so Witch Bane Orb would be pretty decent for that. Or there's got to be some other ways to counteract Mill. Maybe you could have just one Eldrazi Titan in your board because like 10 mana to hard cast like, an Ula, like a Kozilek or an Ulamog, like 11 mana or whatever, is not unheard of for like hard casting in this deck. Because, you know, alongside Chandra taking you up for mana alongside just all your 25 land drops and, and your mind stones it's actually reasonable that you can hard cast it and Koth's minus two is really good at helping you hard cast those big things too adding a red for each mountain so if you have like five mountains you just tab out for five minus Koth, get five mana that's 10 mana right there if you have like a mind stone sitting around you get one more so it's actually not ridiculous and um what was the other thing that I would recommend? Maybe a second bridge just in case the first one dies because it's happened. There, I don't know, this guy's a limit. If you have any ideas for what could be in this sideboard, let me know in the comments down below. Because you never know, we'll probably return to another wish deck someday just to give it another try. Because this card's so versatile and there's so much potential with it that I might try it again in another, another build, another shell, another archetype, different colors. So we'll see. So... That's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. And a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Their names are scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And we now do commander streams with our patrons every Tuesday. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, tcgplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And of course, all the links are down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.